Uh, well, I have heard the word cement come up in nearly all of the sessions today, so I'm very excited uh, to talk to you all about a remix of cement. So my intention today is to illustrate a new perspective of cement in our future. So a little bit of context. Um, I started off my career as an architect, and uh, as an architect, it's a fundamental responsibility for choosing the materials that shape our world. And in this context, we have a limited palette. And the responsibility is also that we understand how the materials are made and what we can do with them. So as a kid, my dad, um, he, he worked at NASA, but then on the weekends, he would uh, cast a lot of concrete. And as a child of the 80s, he taught me how to make concrete myself, um, which was a, a lot of fun. And it's a material that's amazing. It connects us. We can, you know, we've built our modern world with this cement material, this liquid stone. And so I was fascinated uh, by this material, and I'm sure that's probably what inspired me to go into architecture. Um, but then later in life, I learned uh, a lot about how cement was made. Um, and then also uh, this fascination that I've had for years on marine environments and how shells are formed. So. I want to talk to you a bit about remixing and bridging the two different disparate um, elements together about biology and cement. Um, so you all probably know the, the problem um, with cement. So just to focus on, on the root cause problem, um, which is what we're after, is that you, know, you have to burn limestone to make cement. The fundamental root cause problem of CO2 emissions from cement is just by the fact that you have to burn cement and you're releasing, or burn limestone and you're releasing CO2 in that process because you're just after the calcium. So that means to decarbonize uh, this industry uh, today, uh, looking at ways of capturing that carbon, looking at ways of uh, decarbonizing the energy sources that are required to do this. Um, but that's not solving the root cause. The root cause is that we're burning limestone in the first place and we, we should not be. Uh, so where we come uh, in, into play is looking at, well, okay, how, how was nature able to figure out a way to produce cement without harming the natural environment? And so looking at the blueprints of nature and studying uh, these amazing structures that are made in marine environments such as coral or shell formations, what, what I learned was that bacteria uh, played a symbiotic role. And you know, what they're doing is almost similar to 3D printing. As the coral is growing, you have uh, these different templates of microorganisms, in some cases uh, bacteria, that alter the pH of the environment. And just using the surrounding materials that they have, the carbon and the calcium, they're able to template calcium carbonate growth. And that's what starts to grow and laminate, and it becomes this amazing structure. And some of these structures are more durable. They're um, stronger than any cements that we can make. So that became the inspiration to really look at how nature is able to grow cement and how nature is able to do that in such a way that does not have an impact um, on the surrounding environment that's negative, but rather has a positive uh, environment. So biomason is solving the root cause. So instead of looking at ways of um, treating the symptoms, just going back to, let's look at how, how nature's able to make cement and let's um, figure out how we can template from there. And so we grow it the same way uh, that nature does in ambient temperatures and we're building with carbon because carbon's not the problem. Carbon's not the enemy. The problem is, is that we're burning limestone and releasing the CO2 as a waste. Um, and we're able to do that in a controlled way, creating a structural cement. Um, you know, I, I'm personally fascinated with bacteria. I think that, um, you know, what's amazing as a statistic is that we've only discovered one one thousandth of one percent of all bacteria on the planet. And there are multiple, multiple microorganisms that play a role in calcium carbonate precipitation. So it's, it's fascinating to be able to study them and learn more. And we're just at the tip. You know, this is an iteration. We have to continue to grow and build our data and build our knowledge. Um, around this. So what I would like to, to propose here is imagine switching off the world's kilns. Um, it, it, you know, being able to leverage biological solutions that are scalable, that are industrial, that do utilize some of the existing infrastructure but take on a whole different supply chain and being able to radically disrupt how we're creating cement. 
and being able to leverage all of the uh, infrastructure and all the industry partners in the value chain as part of that. Because cement is a very, very, very large industry. Four billion tons are produced every year. Um, so we need to be able to have technologies that can bridge together and go into the existing infrastructure. We don't have time to build all new plants and spend billions of dollars per plant just being able to redefine a problem. We don't have time. We need to be able to incorporate something earlier rather than later. Um, so if you look at traditional manufacturing, you take the limestone and you burn it um, in the kiln. So you're getting CO2 from two different sources, the calcination, which is the CO2 that's released from burning the limestone, and then the CO2 that's coming from combustion. So wonderfully enough that there are so many solutions that are out there, and I can tell you that after 10 years, that it's fantastic to be able to be at an event like this where cement is brought up over and over and over. So there are technologies that are coming out where you're able to take solar calcination and put that into place and practice because we have to do whatever we can today to be able to combat this. Um, and so that's, that's how traditional cement is, is currently made. And what we're looking at is being able to switch off that kiln over time and then put in fermentation instead and put the, put the energy source as the biology and use the metabolism of what's happening with the biomolecules that the microorganisms are producing to be able to do that. Um, and you know, the other thing that I think is important to just illustrate because looking at the how and the why is you know, it's, it's fascinating to be able to, to see these microorganisms at work. Um, so in this video here, uh, taking aggregate, which is traditionally used in concrete production and uh, inoculating that, with microorganisms, the microorganisms start to find uh, themselves around the aggregate particles. And in the presence of calcium and carbon, they start to precipitate on their cell walls. So they essentially become these beautiful nucleation sites of calcite crystals, which are some of the most stable forms of calcium carbonate. And then, you know, zooming out, you have all of these crystals that are just growing uh, in combination and stitching themselves together in meniscus cements, and you have the final um, composite here, which is what you see, the cement that's holding the aggregate together. Um, that process is what's happening inside of the material. And, and just as a, a, a quick note, it doesn't continue to grow like an ice nine. Um, it's more of, uh, you know, growing internally, so becoming more dense. So you're actually growing the cement where the cement needs to be. And by doing that, you can control many features, um, whether it's being able to control the performance, tune in the compression strength, tune in the durability, and really start to leverage different supply chains, such as waste aggregates, which is something that we're very excited about. Um, and so in this loop here, this is uh, one of our pilot facilities that has the existing equipment that you find in precast manufacturing. So being able to leverage an, a technology that's easy to use, you don't have to know a lot about biology. All you need to do is just put the microorganisms into the mixer and then things continue just as you would be manufacturing standard precast products um, themselves. Um, I'm very excited uh, about this. Um, this is something that we're, we're gonna release pre pretty soon and I'm headed out to Denmark um, later this afternoon, but we're, we're so excited that we're scaling um, and being able to transfer this technology um, to an existing manufacturer with multiple locations. And I've had many conversations um, in all of the wonderful breaks here about, you know, this is our 0000001 plant. Uh, we, we definitely need more plants uh, to be able to do this and being able to leverage existing manufacturers and offer them a solution because that's something that's desperately needed right now is, is decentralizing what's happening with um, being able to produce or being able to supply the producers the cement product that they need. Um, and these are just some images of the, some of the products that have been produced. Um, so we are focused on tile uh, right now. There's a big demand um, that we're seeing in Scandinavia for that, but there are many different applications. There are numerous uh, concrete products that are out in the market. Our partner in Denmark has 636 SKUs, uh, and they range all the way from precast uh, to ready mix. So on that, looking at our applications and technology pathway and roadmap, our goal is to work with those manufacturing partners so that they can make whatever concrete product that they want 
and they can serve their markets. For us, it's really just about enabling them and empowering them to leverage a different type of cement, a novel cement that's not made with uh, the emissions associated with calcination. Um, and beyond that, beyond tile uh, and factory, we have uh, a lot of opportunities that we're working with, with um, government groups, um, getting bigger scales, looking at uh, like, you know, what is the largest wall we can create with this? Um, and then seeing, seeing how that works on site, because you don't need this heavy infrastructure to be able to do this on site, you just need the microorganisms. Um, and then new applications have been possible. So, you know, as this uh, new material comes out into the world, what else is possible uh, with it? So being able to control dust, for example, with a low payload, or being able to have living shorelines, which we know is a big problem that's coming up, um, with materials that are compatible with our ocean that actually flourish and thrive in those environments that also have amazing self-healing properties and they live in perpetuity, um, so they continue to grow. And uh, just some, some quick things here, um, you know, performance has always been a core um, for anything that's uh, within construction. It is a very slow sales cycle. It is a very conservative industry, and that is because shelter is one of our strongest needs that we have. So we have to ensure that performance meets what, what it needs to meet. Um, and then lastly, I just want to leave you with that nature has given us the blueprints uh, to solve our immediate challenges, and we believe that products like biocement or technologies like biologically driven cements are able to cure the disease. And our planet does not have time to treat the symptoms, but collectively we can solve our challenges, but we have to use what's available now and start to combine those together. So thank you so much for your attention.